I noticed a little bit of redness across my chest, but I didn't really pay any attention to it. And I noticed that I had sort of a full blown rash going down my neck, all the way down my chest and down my back. It's possible. It even seems quite plausible that the bacterial infection developed at least, I don't know about as a result of the rapamycin, but was allowed to develop perhaps because I'm on rapamycin right now. The idea is that rule number one of longevity is don't die. And there are some obvious things that can kill you, but people don't often think about the medications that you're taking or even potentially the supplements that you're taking. My name is Matt Kidley and welcome to the OptiSpan YouTube channel. Hey everyone, uh, today we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to share a personal uh, health story that hopefully will be in informative and uh, valuable. So um, about 10 days ago or so, I developed a bacterial infection and was prescribed antibiotics for that. And within a day or two of starting to take the antibiotics, you know, I noticed a little bit of redness across my chest, but I didn't really pay any attention to it. And, you know, just kept taking the antibiotics and took care of the infection, which is good. Um, but then about two days ago, I got out of the shower and I noticed that I had sort of a full blown rash, which I'm sure you can see now, uh, going down my neck, all the way down my chest and down my back and uh, came into work and uh, showed it to our chief medical officer, Dr. George Haddad. And he immediately recognized it as sort of a classic case of drug-induced allergy, um, almost certainly due to the antibiotic that I'd been taking. And this was, you know, something that I had had no experience with. And, um, uh, you know, I've only taken, as far as I can remember, antibiotics once in my adult life. So I don't have a lot of experience taking antibiotics. And so it was completely unexpected. And I thought it might be useful to share this. And, you know, um, one of our four movements in the OptiSpan practice, we call staying alive, right? And the idea is that, you know, rule number one of longevity is don't die. And there are some obvious things that can kill you, you know, the major killers, heart disease, cancer, things like that. There are also risky lifestyle behaviors, but um, people don't often think about the medications that you're taking or even potentially the supplements that you're taking and potential allergies. And certainly this was something that I had never thought about really in any detail before. And again, I'm fortunate. This is a relatively mild allergic reaction. Um, it's, you know, sort of annoying. It itches like crazy. I had trouble sleeping last night. But uh, beyond that, you know, I'm, I'm okay, right? But there are actually people who suffer very serious allergic reactions to drugs. And I think what's most important is once you've had an allergic reaction like this, if you get exposed to the same medication again, you're much more likely to have a severe sort of anaphylactic reaction. And so this is just something to be aware of if you've never had this kind of an experience before. And so I did a little bit of looking uh, in the literature and, you know, it turns out that Estimated lifetime prevalence for this kind of an anaphylactic reaction is, you know, maybe as high as a couple percent in the United States. So a not insignificant number of people will experience a pretty severe allergic reaction. And, you know, somewhere between 35 and 45 percent of severe anaphylactic reactions are caused by medication. So, again, this is just sort of a public service uh, announcement. Uh, given my own experience, I thought it might be valuable to kind of put this in the bucket of staying alive, things to be aware of. And certainly if I ever start to develop a rash on my chest soon after taking a new medication or supplement in the future, I will be much more aware and paying attention uh, before it de hopefully develops into what I'm experiencing right now. All right. Hey, everyone. Uh, we're back about six days later now. Um, and as you can see, my uh, antibiotic-induced allergic reaction it appears to be completely gone. So uh, so that's great. Um, I'm still here and appear to be as good as new. So I thought I'd just share some of um, my thoughts from going through this and, and, and potential insights. So again, just give you a little bit more background on what happened. I developed a bacterial infection in my arm. I'll talk a little bit more about that because this is in the middle of a, a course of rapamycin. I'm taking eight milligrams once a week and I'm planning to do that for 12 weeks. I'm about five weeks in now. And I'll I'll put an episode together for the R files on sort of my insights from that, that course of uh, rapamycin. Um, obviously, it's possible. Uh, it even seems quite plausible that the bacterial infection developed at least, I don't know about as a result of the rapamycin, but was allowed to develop perhaps because I'm on rapamycin right now. Obviously, we'll never know for sure. I will say, as far as I know, this is the only 
this is only the second uh, bacterial infection that I've had during my adult life that required antibiotics. So it's only the second time I can recall taking antibiotics as an adult. And uh, in this particular case, it was a different antibiotic I'd never taken before. I developed uh, antibiotic-induced allergic reaction, which is what led to that rash uh, that I showed you uh, last time. Looking back now on how this sort of evolved, within a couple of days of starting to take these antibiotics, I noticed that I had just a couple of dots appear on my chest, and I actually didn't pay any attention to it. Um, uh, I just thought it was a little bit of skin irritation. And as I line up the timing of my course of rapamycin, I'm taking it, as I mentioned, once a week. Um, it was on a, I typically do that on Sunday. So I take my rapamycin on Sunday. It was a day before that when I noticed the first dot. So about the second day that I'd been on the antibiotics, actually, I noticed the dots on my chest and they didn't progress at all for another six days. So I'd been taking the antibiotics for eight days of a 10 day course. Um, at the time, eventually it, came, it, it developed in this full blown rash. And it's interesting to think about because I taking the rapamycin once a week, Right When I first started to develop the rash, then I took this dose of rapamycin, which certainly could have an anti-inflammatory, anti-allergy impact that sort of kept this allergic reaction tamped down for almost a week until that rapamycin had cleared my circulatory system, which is when it developed into this full-blown allergic reaction. At that point, once I realized what was happening, uh, I stopped taking, obviously, the antibiotics. Also, all of the other supplements that I take, which is not very many, and I'm, we're going to do an episode on, on Matt's supplements here uh, in the, the near future, uh, but I just figured to err on the side of caution, I'd stop taking everything. I don't take any other prescription medications, so that really wasn't an issue. I did debate whether to stop the rapamycin course or not. I decided to continue, and so then I, on the next, the following Sunday, um, I took my eight milligrams of rapamycin, and within a couple of days, the rash was completely gone. So again, no way to know either for sure whether or not the rapamycin kind of prevented the full-blown allergic reaction to begin with, or whether the rapamycin helped with bringing down the allergic reaction once it had sort of turned into this full-blown rash. But it's sort of interesting to think about. So I thought that might be worth sharing just as an N of one anecdotal sort of experience. Um, and also just to reiterate uh, the importance of recognizing these sorts of uh, medication-induced allergic reactions. As I mentioned, I, I in hindsight, looking back, the sort of early development of this allergic reaction across my chest um, is very obvious now. And in talking to uh, my physician uh, and our CMO here at Optispan, that is sort of the classic uh, antibiotic-induced allergic reaction pattern, right? It starts as a an initial breakout, usually on the chest, sometimes on the trunk, um, and then, you know, can develop into this much more severe allergic reaction, even far more severe than what I experienced with a rash, really, just from my neck all the way down the front side and then on, on my back. So worth paying attention to. Um, I think a lot of people don't realize how common these medication-induced allergic reactions are. So now I'm aware of it. Hopefully now you're aware of it if you weren't, and you'll be able to catch it earlier than I did. Um, certainly with antibiotics, I think it's worth you know avoiding antibiotics as much as we can. Uh, we know that every time you take a, a course of antibiotics, it kind of wipes out your gut microbiome and potentially other microbiomes in your body that are important. And so that's obviously not something that we want to do unless we have to. I'll just share one of the things that I was intentional about on this course of antibiotics was upping my fiber intake. Um, I did that by increasing uh, my consumption of, of kakia seeds. Um, I do that typically in my morning shakes anyway to get a little uh, extra fiber. Also added some flaxseed and some inulin powder. And I'll say I had no gastrointestinal problems at all through this entire course of antibiotics. So again, I don't know if it was the extra fiber, but that seemed to help. I eat a pretty high fiber diet to begin with, but that's certainly something I would recommend if you end up having to take antibiotics. Um, it seemed to work pretty well for me. And again, uh, hopefully you never experience a drug-induced allergic reaction like I did. But if you do, then now you'll be prepared and you can catch it more quickly than I did and hopefully have a, a very quick recovery. I'll just leave you again with the advice that 
uh, if you ever do develop a drug-induced allergic reaction, that you make sure you get that information into your medical records so that um, if you say, for example, have to take an antibiotic, you don't get prescribed an antibiotic that you are allergic to because I understand that these types of allergic reactions are often much more severe the second or the third time you're exposed to the medication than they are the very first time. So hopefully you can learn from my mistakes and be better prepared if you uh, ever have to take antibiotics or other medications in the future.